All right, here we go. Number 18 from our college algebra homework number three in my lab math says for the function below, find the vertex, the axis of symmetry. It wants us to determine whether there's, a, whether there's a minimum or a maximum value and find the value and graph. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Up here in the top, we're going to get started with the function f of x equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 21. Now the first thing it wants us to find is the vertex. And it turns out for a quadratic function, there is a vertex formula. So the vertex formula is minus b over 2a f of minus b over 2a. So the vertex of a quadratic is the, the vertex on the parabola, which is an ordered pair at the center of the parabola. So I don't, I don't know if you notice this or not, but this is an ordered pair. This is the x-coordinate. This is the y-coordinate. So if I know what x is, look at this. It says I'm going to plug that in to the function to get my y value. So to do this, we have to know the value for a and b. So a is negative 1, b is negative 10, and so that should allow me to get the x coordinate of the vertex. Here we go. So that's going to equal negative b, which is minus a negative 10, all over... Let's do that better. Bam. All over 2a, which is 2 times negative 1. And then f of whatever this is. So I'm going to leave this blank so that when I calculate this value, I'll know what to put in over here. Equals. All right, here we go. So that's going to be, let's see, two negatives make a plus. So that's going to be 10 over negative 2, which is negative 5. And then that tells me that I'm going to do f of negative 5 for the y coordinate of the vertex. And so what does that mean? Well, that means to come up here to our function and replace each x with negative 5. So that's going to be negative, negative 5 squared minus 10 times negative 5, minus 21. And I'm going to run out of room. All right, so here we go. So we've got our vertex is negative 5, and then all of this needs to go in the calculator to see what the y-coordinate is. So let's pull up our handy-dandy Class whiz, and let's see, we've got negative, negative 5 squared minus 10 times negative 5 minus 21. And that's going to be 4. So that gives us our vertex of 5, negative 4, okay? Using the vertex formula. Now what I'd like to do is verify that down here with Desmos. So we're going to put in our function f of x equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 21. And if I recenter that you're going to see that our vertex is at negative 5, 4, which verifies the work. Okay, so this is a graphical representation of what we did algebraically up here. And so let's input that into our my math lab and see if that's right. As an ordered pair, negative 5, comma, 4. 
enter. Bam, nice. Axis of symmetry. It turns out that the axis of symmetry is always x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. Did you catch that? I'll say it again. The axis of symmetry is always x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. And you do have to have the x equal. If you just put negative 5, it won't count it correct. Part C, does f of x have a maximum or a minimum? Okay, well, there's two ways we can answer that question. First of all, if you look over here in Desmos, we can see that this vertex is the highest point. So that means that this is going to be a maximum, but we can also tell that from the value of A. Did you notice that A was negative? So if A is negative, that means that your parabola opens down and your vertex will be a max. If A is positive, then your parabola opens up and your vertex will be a minimum. So our parabola is going to have a maximum and now what does it want me to do? Let's see here. Oh, the minimum or maximum value is. Now you need to know that that minimum or maximum value, if it says is, that is the y coordinate of the vertex. So that maximum value is going to be 4. And now it wants me to graph. So let's see here. I've got a parabola. Notice it says click the graph to plot the vertex, so it wants the vertex first. And what did we say the vertex was? Negative 5, 4. Click the graph to plot a point on your parabola. Let's see, so I don't actually have another point on the parabola. What I can do is I can come up here to my function and I can actually calculate another value. So let's make a table real quick. And the easiest value probably to pick would be zero if it ends up being on our graph. So if x is zero, these cancel and leaves negative 21. And that is actually not on the graph. So we're going to have to pick another number that's actually on this graph. So what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing that whatever the vertex is, maybe if I stay really close to the vertex, I might get a point on the graph. Let's try x is negative 4. So that's going to be minus negative 4 squared minus 10 times negative 4. minus 21. Is that right? Yeah. So that's plugging negative 4 into our function. And then we're going to have the handy dandy calculator calculate that. Clear. Minus negative 4 squared minus 10 times negative 4 minus 21 3. So that tells us, tells us if I'm at negative 4, then I need to be at 3. And it only takes two points. Let's save that. Oh, and let's compare that over here to Desmos. So at negative 3, I'm at 0. Look at this. Negative, two, negative 3, I'm at 0. And this says over here, it says at negative 7, I'm at 0. So this is looking good. Let's check that. <clears throat> Bam. And that's it for that problem. Um, you know what I think I'm going to do just for a bonus is I'm going to go back to the class whiz and I'm going to show you how to get the vertex from the class whiz as well. Okay, so let's go to the menu.
we're going to go down to where it says equation, polynomial, and remember if it's quadratic, it's a degree of 2. And let's enter our coefficients. Negative 1, negative 10, negative 21, equals and equals again. Now that's going to tell us our x-intercepts. Notice that that does correspond to the x-intercept over here on Desmos. So negative 3 and negative 7, those are our x-intercepts. But if I hit equal one more time, it's going to tell me the x-coordinate of the vertex. And that does correspond to what we got. x was negative 5. And if I hit equals again, that's going to give me the y coordinate of the vertex, which is 4. So the class whiz gets your vertex and your x-intercepts for you. That's kind of cool, actually. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.